discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and we are finally doing our top 100 games of all time, again. So this is actually going to be a lot more exciting. I'm, I'm very excited to do this one because now we have a frame of reference yes. from last yes. year, uh, unlike uh, the first time, which was still fun to do, but man, whoo, oh boy, this one is different because now we can see tastes have changed and things. I mean, so... I've probably played, I know you've played overall more games than I have. I've probably played more within a year, yeah, any given yeah. year at this point. Yeah. But I had like 150, 150 games that could have made the list. Um, but I've played like probably like 250 or 300 maybe. Yeah. 300 maybe pushing it. But uh, we play a lot of the games, so I'm going to take the Vassal route and say that uh, even though things have moved or if things have fallen off, um, that these are all still phenomenal games and, like, obviously, they're on my list. So. Well, and you'll notice something I'll say a lot throughout these series of videos, the stuff I used to have, mm -hmm. that these are games that I only have so much space currently. So, like, these are games that are great, but they never get played because of my lack of, right, of right. my family. So, I send them off to other people that can play them. Mm -hmm. They're still in my top 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no. if whenever I get that space, I'll probably rebuy them. Yeah, no, for stuff. sure. And I, I, I think all the games, not all the games, most of the games on my top 100 are games I actually own. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are a few that I don't own anymore, but I want to get again. It was just a matter of, like you said, playing time. Yeah, exactly. And, and stuff like that. So, uh, Kat is here. She doesn't have a top 100, even though she has played pretty much the exact same amount of games that I have. Uh, but she just couldn't make a hundred of them. So she's just going to be here for commentary and just being here. Just read comments. Rude comments about every. I would you say something negative about every single game. I can do it. Okay. About, yeah. About his list. About, his, about, <laughs> about my list. Brad, what a good choice. <laughs> you, you've never played that. It's still better than yours. And you, you're a piece of shit. No. Yeah, I. You know, if you can, that'd be funny. I'm gonna say yeah. Okay, okay fine. Fine. Oh, so to we're gonna start off with uh, an honorable mention. Oh, do I have to do it for honorable mention? No, you can praise the honorable mention. Okay. No, I don't know. That's the only one you should do a negative comment for because it didn't make the list. Just didn't crack the hundred. Now, hold on, real quick. Did you? I make my hundred by I write every single game, not every single, but every game that I think will make the list on an index card. And I shuffle it up and then I, like, okay, this one is Hunt for the Ring, and then this one is Gloomhaven. Well, I like Gloomhaven better than Hunt for, and I just go. That way, it took me forever. I think you were done before I was, and I was like, dude, I still have games that I know will make it. So yeah. I did, well, and I've added a couple things, reshuffled mine around. Oh, since, I did too. There's, there was some games I played after I made the list. Yep, yep. Um, I also utilized that one, I, I did that, I don't know if you did that one website. Dude, no, I got to like 40%, and then I exited so out, yeah. and then yeah, it was all gone, it. and I'm like, fuck that. I did it that, forever. and it was pretty close to what I okay. had. I didn't change it. Yeah, what they put. Compare, but I mean, mm -hmm. my it was pretty close. Yeah, that um, happened, that thing is pretty cool. I'll probably do that next year. Yeah, I I bookmarked it just to have it on my deal. But awesome. but yeah, it's pretty much it's a long tedious process. So um, for that, I kind of got that idea from Vassal because that's how Tom Vassal does his is the index cards. And yep, that's how I do it. stuff too. So so in this segment, uh, not counting the honorable mention, I have three new games um, from one two. Three new games. Yep. Uh, counting the honorable mention, I actually have four. Three new to the list, not new games. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah, new yeah. to the list. Is, <laughs> yep. That's kind of whenever I say new, I mean new to the list. Yes. Uh, so, all right, honorable mention. I will start. My honorable. <laughs> my honorable mention is Fuse. Have you played Fuse? No. Fuse is a uh, real-time dice game about uh, defusing bombs. Uh, and whenever you are playing it, you are basically, everyone's rolling these dice and you have these cards that you're trying to, and it's basically like quick maths. Pew, pew, skidididip, bop. 
Uh, anyway, so you have like these challenges of you're trying to go through this deck of cards, and it's like, okay, you need a green two and and a and a, and a black two, and, and both of those will equal four. It's like, okay, great. So then you're like reaching in the bag, you're rolling, and you're like, everyone's trying to complete right. these objectives. So you're like, oh, uh, I need that green, and then they're like, but but I need the green, and then so you're trying to work together. Once you complete them, they're gone, and you're just going through basically a, a deck of yeah. cards. Super fun. Um, uh, dice dice game. I love real time games. So, um, like, and I played this. Uh, it works right at two players. We've played at three players. We played at four players. Uh, it's just it's just a blast. So that's my honorable mention. What's your negative thing? You said I didn't have to do with honorable mention. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, that's agree. right. That's right. I was Asshole. like, <laughs> I was that's, I was saying that the. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I will say something about it. That's not negative because I'm allowed to. Um, yeah, it's fun because as, as as backwards as this sounds, it's fun to scream at each other and like you get there's a lot of name calling like you bitch <laughs> like I need that. Right. It's it's fun because it's high it's high intensity and sponsored by Diet Coke. Sponsored by Diet Coke. Yeah. <laughs> We're in with Coke. Um, my honorable mention was eighty seven last year. It slipped down. There's some little some slippery spots, some slippage. Some... Yeah. Um, and mainly it slipped because just lack of playing it. Uh, it's one of those that I haven't played for a long time. I want to try the new Legacy version of it. Um, it's Betrayal. Ooh. Okay, House on the Hill. That's my honorable mention. Uh, I I've never I haven't played Bolar's Gate, and I haven't played Do you like uh, Legacy. That's not bad. Okay, I mean, I mean, it's, it's literally the same. Yeah, game. <laughs> but but Betrayal's it's Betrayal. You know, it was one of the earlier games I played. I played the old Avalon Hill version. The the old. It's original. still Avalon Hill. Well, I mean, like the original oh, okay. iteration, like back from the what early nineties. Probably it um, still looks like it's early nineties. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's just it's it's it has some flops mm -hmm. as far as the story stories go. Some of them are just dumb. Yeah. But for the most part, it's it's just fun. I think it's like a for me, it's like a three to one ratio for yeah. every three good ones you get, you get one really shitty one. Yeah, and it's it's just. There isn't really much to say. I mean, if you're watching this video, you you've probably heard mm -hmm. of or have played Betrayal. I mean, it's it's one of the old original classics that um, I, I'd love to see what Legacy brings into the. So far, fold. it's pretty fun. Yeah, like it's it's pretty good. We've only done two chapters, and there's thirteen total. I think something like that. Yeah. So it's it's pretty neat. Component. No. Oh, go ahead. Uh, no, I think there's 12. It's just the number looks like a 3. Isn't That's that right. Yeah. The component quality sucks ass. God, like, they suck. Like, they just did come out with the... The upgrade. The better, the, the yeah. better uh, health. Yeah, 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 For the characters and stuff. Um, but it's a great one. It, yeah. it fits that, that niche that fits. It is my... Haunted Games. It is my 107. Okay. This year it fell off my list. Um, it was... Oh, I don't have that written down. I actually do, but it's on my... I didn't bring him with me. Slacker. <laughs> yeah, I suck. Uh, <laughs> Go print it, it, it did fall, though, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so now you can start saying negative stuff. Because my number one. What a piece of garbage. 100 is the worst fucking game. You know, I don't even want to. It sucks. Have fun trying to think, think of something negative. For Five Minute Dungeon, this fell from 98 last year. So it is. it fell two spaces. I have something negative. <laughs> oh, it's real time? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it gives me a headache. <laughs> so five minute dungeon. I uh, I have no interest in five minute Marvel at all. Yeah, you know, like I'm like it's probably the same. Five minute dungeon is a real time game where you are a generic fantasy guy with your own deck of cards that are literally just symbols, going through a dungeon deck uh, in real time and just trying to play symbols and kill the monsters to get to the final boss. There are five bosses in the game. Uh, each of them increase the number of cards you have to get through within five minutes. Uh, it actually fell back. It's it's right on the cusp. Um, it might go up again because they just released an expansion, and I got the within that expansion I got the Kickstarter stuff mm -hmm. for the original. Uh, so my it's probably going to stay around here if not go up a little bit with that. Um, but I find myself. Like I kept, we kept playing it over and over because we never beat it. But then we finally beat all of all the five bosses that I have, and I was like, "Okay, I'm kind of done now." Like it, it wasn't a challenge anymore, even though it's still super hard. But I love the fast-paced nature of this game. The app is just a glorified timer, but it has Eric Bailey, who does the voice of the uh, um, um, Honest Trailers. Yes. Um, so that's awesome. So that's my number one hundred. Right. I'm in the dungeon. 
My 100 Which is... gives me a headache, because that's a negative gives thing. Gives me a headache. No, one, if I had to put a negative touch on it, you have to play it with the right people, otherwise this game's not fun at all. Because you're not with, if you're not with a good group of people, that, then it, it's just not. That's probably the case with a lot of real-time games. Yes, though, isn't absolutely. It? Yeah. All right, so my 100 is a series of games. Um, they're all virtually, the, they're the exact same game, just different themes put on them. No, it's Timeline. It's a, they kind of a little, comes in little tins. And there's like, it's, it's dates, historical dates oh, okay. and stuff. Like the original timeline is like American, <coughs> American history, there's British history, there's there's just tons of them. And I have several. Okay. But pretty much it's a simple, it comes with the tiny little cards, like the little ticket to ride cards. Oh. And it'll have an event on there, it's like um, the uh, electricity was discovered. Um, so you have a hand of cards, you place one, and it has the year. And then this next person's turn. So you have, um, and it, you, it doesn't have the year on the side that you're doing. So then mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I have uh, the ink, first ink pen was to, uh, created, and uh, all these things. And you're like, what did that have before, or after? Oh, the, the, the date thing that was that's placed. out there. Okay. And you're like, you have to guess. So then you put it out there and flip it over. And it's like, if you're right, then that's good. You're trying to get rid of all the cards in your hand. Oh, because if you true. guess wrong, you have to put it where it was supposed to go, and then you have to draw another card. Oh, gotcha. And okay. So you're trying to guess huh. historical dates with stuff like, you know, cave drawings. Sounds well, way over <laughs> here at the beginning. You Sounds know, and, like a game that I would be incredibly <clears throat> bad at. Like, well, but that's dates the thing. I it's, suck it's at. It's so simple, and it's just so easy and fun. Okay. I mean, and then they have card line, which is a branch off of it. It's like animals. And you can be like, you can go by weight. You can choose what you want to go by. If you want to go by size of the animal oh, okay. or how much they weigh or whatever. And then you can do the same thing. And you huh. put it, and it's it's just a crazy game. Like, you have all this different themes of it. Uh, you know, it, it's, it is what it is, but it's a great filler. I have a bunch of them, and it's always a hit whenever mm -hmm. we play it. And it was unranked previously before so that's this. New. So it's a new one. Okay. It's just... Yeah, I don't remember you talking about that one. <clears throat> Number 99 is a game that... It uh, was on at 66, now it's at 99, so it fell 33 spaces, and uh, that's because this game is just utter trash. Uh, Legends of Andor um, mm -hmm. is my number 99, uh, and it really is, uh, like, it fell basically through lack of play. We actually just picked it back up again uh, with, a, with uh, our friend Josh, just because um, I have all the, the parts for it. Um, and so before that, it had been, like, four years or something since I had played it, but I was like, no, I remember liking this. It's the very yeah. first video I did on the channel, uh, which we'll probably end up recording. Not the series, but we'll probably end up recording that so I can replace it. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, Legends of Andor is a very unique game because your goal, it, it's, it's campaign-based, but your goal isn't to kill every single monster. Your goal is to be smart about who you kill because each time you kill someone, that your time tracker goes up. Right. But you need to kill some of them because they will they, they all will randomly spawn in each of these spaces m move to, towards the castle and they'll hopscotch over each other. So if you just leave them unattended, they will just boom, boom. Like this one guy will just get there in one turn. So it's more of a puzzle. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, it's Definitely. more of a puzzle than it is like uh, an actual fighting game, but you have to really work together on this. Uh, the first couple scenarios aren't the most exciting. They're still kind of like mm -hmm. easing you into it, but we were able to uh, still win. Um, and I'm very excited to make it to, you know, the, the second part is out on the sea, and then the third part I have no idea, but I have all of them. I have all the expansions for it, uh, so... It's it's just it's a blast and like aesthetically it's also nice because it they're tokens um, or they're standees for the monsters but there's a front picture and a back picture right. no one does that and I don't know why but I had more artwork mm -hmm. I mean but I really like that both the characters like if you're a wizard there's there's male and female um, and right. then there's standees for male and female on that as well so the names are great the names are awful <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, it's 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 a good simple puzzle game. Simple in terms of learning the game. It's it's very hard. What's your negative on that one? I don't like the puzzle aspect. Oh, you don't? So I get frustrated. I'm a little slow. No, <laughs> um, I uh, get helmet. I get it's not. I don't want to wait. I did that. <laughs> 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 this is why you wear. 
No, um, I get frustrated pretty easily. And sometimes when I, like, sometimes, honestly, I'm just like, why aren't we killing this one? Because we have three <laughs> turns to win and if we kill anyone else. So I'll that's just, how it is. Like, that's how you'll yeah. sit there and be like, hey, if you don't make it, if you don't finish your objectives by the time it gets to leather end, you're like, okay, good, good. Okay, we need to kill this guy. No, we can't because two of them are going to make it this turn. If we kill this guy, then that'll move it up and then we'll lose. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know if I would like that. Yeah. See, so it, it can be, it can be a yeah, little bit like... If Seth wasn't there to watch right. us, I'd we'd lose immediately. <laughs> the puzzle aspect of that is the exact reason why I don't like Gloomhaven. Because oh. it's almost a puzzle it's there. Yeah. scenario because you have to wisely use your how you attack things and how you use your hand to cards. You are correct. Everything. It's not as puzzly. Well no, I know oh, it's not no, as sorry. Much, uh, yeah. But I mean I'm just saying like if I'm, if I'm doing an action or an adventure fantasy game, I wanna go and I'm I'm gonna kill shit. Yeah. I wanna, yeah. I wanna yeah. To loot their bodies or yeah. Or yeah. teabag him or something. Yeah. <laughs> like whatever you have to do, just yeah. to, you know. That that's fair. Actually, that that's a good point. So you probably won't like it, <laughs> right? If, because it is it's a lot more puzzly than that Gloomhaven is. And if you don't like that, right? Then all right. So that's my number nine, Legends of Andor. And that's my grape. <laughs> I'm actually liking the negative because I'm gonna be all praising and you can be the ne the realism. I well, you know, I love negative things. <laughs> yeah, <so. that's> all. <laughs> Feel free to dump on mine too if you want. Oh no, if no, you, just if you played on. Them. Oh, if, if you I played. Play. So yes. my number ninety nine is Caverna. <gasps> yes. Uh, I've only played it once. Like I said, I've only played it once this year, um, and it's still good. Mm -hmm. uh, Feast for Odin, I think, will probably knock this off the list when I once I get a chance to play Feast for Odin. I don't know why I bought that game. Feast for Odin. Feast for Odin. Because we're not because gonna play it. I no, I very much want to play. It's just gonna be like. All right, babe, uh, take notes, because there's 50 spaces you can go to. God. There's actually almost 70. Oh. Is it 70? It's Man. 60 something. Oh, I think, I think it's 67. Yeah, something yeah. like that. But anyway, um, there's tons of different options on this. The reason this is better than Agricola, I mean, Agricola, the misery farm, is another uh, <laughs> name. You always had to feed your people. You always had to do stuff. Well, this one, you still have to do stuff like that. But there's other ways of winning this game. You can go on adventures. If you have points, you can... Damn family members you eating can all that food. <laughs> you can build up your cave, you can... So you pretty much do everything you, in a, you can you can in a bricola. You can pick a different route, though, and focus on different routes. Gotcha. And every one of them is viable. I haven't played either one. I just yeah. know Tom Basil likes Caverna because of that reason. Yeah. Rado likes Agricola because you have to do uh, well in well, everything. Agricola just sucks. <laughs> Agricola, it's, like, it's almost like, and that's why I really, really want to try Feast for Odin, is because it's like he came out with Agricola took the good parts of Agricola and added to it to make Caverna. And then from what I've been hearing is they took all the good stuff from the first two games, put them into Feast for Odin, and then added his little his little uh, polyomino Tetris <laughs> oh, part of the, oh, the game, you know? Yeah, right. Um, so, uh, but Caverna's wonderful. Uh, plus it has all the, all the frickin' cool-shaped meeples and stuff. Uh, and, it's awesome. It's, it's the sheeples and the peoples and like I said, if I get the chance to play, if I get a chance to play and Feast and for Odin, then this will probably fall back down just yeah. because. What was it that again? It was 90, uh, 98 out of 102? Yeah, yeah it, it was, was 102 it. last year, so it went up three. And gotcha. Just kinda... All right. My number 98 is a game that uh, I, I defended a lot because people say that this game. Uh, uh, it's hot garbage. It's hot garbage. Uh, that another game killed this one, and uh, they, they might be right at this point. Uh, it's Mysterium. Mysterium is uh, my 98. It was at 57 last year, and so that is 41 spaces that it has dropped. If you don't know, Mysterium is kind of like a more advanced Dixit. Uh, at least, I mean, there's really nothing similar except the artwork. But one person plays a ghost, other people play the, the ghost talking people. Uh, what do they call those? Uh, mediums. I was mediums. Like uh, uh, other oh. people play mediums, and the ghost has to give clues based off these very obscure but beautiful artwork uh, cards to them, because each person has a person, a place, and a thing that ties to their uh, to them. So if someone has a hunter, and uh, the hunter's gun is silver, and then I give them a card that has a knight on it, and I'm thinking, oh, the knight, the silver, his gun, silver, they'll get that. The caveat is that the ghost can't talk, so they just have to sit there and be incredibly frustrated at how stupid everyone at the table is. I'm not saying they are, because whenever I'm the ghost, I'm like, 
they'll get it, and then they don't. And I'm like, what kind of dumbass clue did I just give them? Why did I think <laughs> they would get that? <laughs> so, so the game you're saying killed this is probably deception. Deception. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was Even saying. though I don't think they're at all similar, except one person can't talk. That's the mm -hmm. only thing. But at the end of the day, at least. No, and no one's feeling stupid the entire time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, here's the thing. This game is still a blast. Um, and it's just, I only play this whenever we are with our group of friends. And it's always a hit, and they, uh, they always want to play it. But if I'm not playing with them, I'm not playing it. Right. I think that's pretty much where I'm at. Yeah. What's your negative on this one? So this one's actually really specific. So for this game, um, you have to have a certain type of brain to play this game because if you're like type A has to be in <coughs> control but you're playing the ghost or like you're not and this isn't a bad thing some people just aren't creative That's and true. it can be really really hard to look at something that is abstract on purpose and just be like I, I, like they yeah. just freeze so last, you you have to have a certain part in your brain turned last on last time we played this game uh, my friend Taylor wanted to be the ghost so I'm like oh yeah no that's that's perfectly fine and I think she had a bad time because, like, I think she was actually, like, really sad because we were all just giving her shit because she kept giving us bad clues or what she thought were good. And, that's, and I'm like, hard. that's the nature of the ghost. But we made it to the final thing. And afterwards, it's it's kind of a weird, finicky endgame thing. But uh, you basically, everyone everyone who has their clues, they set them all out, and then there's they're, they're numbered. And then the ghost takes three cards, and it's like, trying to find three cards right. that match to one one person. And every card that she played, we were like, okay, perfect. Yeah, this is awesome. And everyone voted, because you secretly vote. And we're like, it is for sure this person. Everyone, this all makes sense. We're good. We're going to win. And it wasn't even close. She's like, We're all like, everyone was like, it's three. And she's like, it's one. Oh, and yeah. we're like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, you're right. I would agree with you. That's my 98. All right. My number 98 uh, was 112 Ooh, last year, so it pretty it up 15 spaces. Um, it just came out with the second edition. Uh-huh. Camel Up. Oh, I never played it. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's a... Uh, um, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> it's 98. <laughs> it's it's uh, camel racing. Oh, okay. Um, and you are uh, gambling on who you think is going to win. I mean, that's how you can kind of get stuff... What's kind of neat is, I have the first edition, I don't have any reason to get the second one, but um, everybody has their own colored camel meeple, and there's a racetrack that goes around, right? And then you have um, your own colored dice, then there's this pyramid, a little contraption that all the dice are in, and you shake it up, and then there's like this little lever, so you turn it like upside down, push the button until one falls out, turn it over, and then that, that nut color gets to move that many spaces, Huh. right? So, but there's a stacking thing. It's kind of wonky. So if <clears throat> the black camel is right here, and if the blue one had to move three spaces to get to the same space, the blue one gets on top of the black camel, right? Because they, they stack on top of each other. But then if the black moves, he takes the blue one oh. with him, <laughs> and then the blue would get to move off. <laughs> so, like, there's a, there's a strategy with that. Of, uh -huh. If you can get landed on, on the back of a camel, and uh -huh. then they kind of... Like drafting, I guess, yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, and you're just gambling the whole time. I think you do three laps or something like that. But, um, but it's just fun. I mean, it's it's simple. The game doesn't last no time at all. You're you're secretly betting on who you think's going to win, and then you get points at the end for it mm -hmm. and everything. Um, second edition, I think, really, it's just updated art, and I think, I think so they too. did a better, uh, the better, a better, better, better I, think it's a, I think it's well, I think it's like a plastic pyramid instead of because it was cart like a chit cardboard from that you put together with rubber bands oh, which it worked, no, it worked great did it? Okay. yeah i mean i played it a bunch and it's never did <coughs> all but it and uh but it's a great one you know it, it went up the family likes it it's just one of those that hits the table awesome all righty uh, <laughs> uh -oh. uh -oh. my number 97 is another real-time game uh your real-time games are fun i definitely see why people hate them yeah. because it, it is a sudden burst of stress. Like, stress is fine in, like, co-op games where everyone's feeling it, uh, but it's, like, usually, like, an ebb and flow. Real times are just... <laughs> so, my number 97 is Escape Curse of the Temple. Was at 90, so now it, it only fell back seven spaces. Still, 
escape curse of the temple. That's one right behind you. Literally this one. Oh, sorry, I was thinking one of the, like, the escape. Um, oh, yeah, oh. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Uh, so, uh, this is a real-time game where everyone is trying to escape the temple um, by just rolling dice that uh, match symbols so you're trying to move from tile to tile. Trying to get gems because you need a certain number of gems, and then you're trying to find the exit all listening to a okay. CD. That's <laughs> 10 minutes long, right? That is 10 minutes. You have exactly 10 minutes. So, that's another great thing about the game is it, you know for sure how long this game will last. Um, by, and you're waiting for sound clues, trying to, okay, well, the, the bell just rings, so we need to get to the middle tile. Uh, and then there's also expansions, which I have that add cursed uh, things, which some of them you can get where it's like if dice fall off the table, then they're lost, or you have to uh, like put one hand on your head, or you have to uh, expose yourself to the neighborhood. Uh, some know. of the, some of those curses that you have to play in these kind of games. All right. uh, <laughs> yeah, see, that's another reason why you wouldn't like it. Games said I had to, officer. <laughs> but uh, it's just a high burst of energy, and uh, if your dice can lock up, and then your friends have to come help you if you can't pl roll any dice and uh, it's just it's just a blast um, or never gets played but uh, that's my number 97 yeah. so this is a stupid gripe but um, he makes me I thought you were saying this is a stupid game I was like the, well, <laughs> this is a stupid game no. it, was so, like one of, it was in our top 10 co-op I love, I love oh, co-op right. games and I think this is really fun but the fact that you have to rely on a CD it's really cool because but I mean like it in just, this day and age it shows its age Surprised they don't have an app. For they, uh, well, yeah. I'm I'm certain that there's probably an MP3 download. There yeah. there has to be at this yeah, point. Somewhere. But the fact that they didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, it's just older. So yeah. 97. So, yeah, so it just it shows its age, but that's the minor. Right? Word. My number 97 was not on the list last year. It's new. It's an older game, but it's new to the list. Uh, Colt Express. You ever played that one? Mm -mm. It's a programming game. Okay. Uh, there's a 3D train that sits out in the middle of the table. Everybody has their meeple. Mm -hmm. And you have a hand of cards. You program what you want to do with your, with your person, whether you want them to go from inside the train car to the roof, whether you want them to move forward, whether you want them to shoot uh, or punch <laughs> or whatever. Um, and your goal is to, uh, there's like money there's briefcases with money or gold or whatever on the train, and you're trying to program. There's a Maltrell Marshal oh, that's good. on there too. That Is he will, that will like he arrest you or whatever. No, he moves. There's a card that lets you move the marshal, and it's yeah. like and stuff. So you're just pretty much trying to program, kill the other people, and be the last person to stay or get the most money. <laughs> okay. Um, and you're just it's a pro it's a simple programming game, and but it's fun because you have the three. It's neat to see on the table because not only do you have a 3D train built out of yeah, yeah, that's really neat. The deal, mm -hmm. but they all, it also gives you like cactuses and rocks you can put together oh, to put on the outside to kind of give cool. us an aesthetic, you know. That's cool. They've come out with expansions. There's another expansion that adds to the game, and then just here recently, uh, online, they've come out with little character span. I don't know what they do, but each character in the game has their own little expansion now. I don't know if it's huh. next year, maybe in different cards different. or what. I don't know. But it's it's a it's another kind of like Campbell Up. You know, it's that same weight. It's mm -hmm. simple. You just kind of go out. You just screwing with people right you know that like if they if they, if they pick shoot but you go first and you go up to the roof mm -hmm. then they miss it's, then it's it, you know they miss or or they may shoot because i think it's they shoot the closest to them so like, <laughs> oh my so god like they, so like if there's somebody behind them and they wanted to shoot you then if you disappear then it, and they shoot them you know or something it's 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 just really cool it's a simple programming game but it's a good fun doesn't take very long awesome awesome 96, my 96, my, 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 my 96 actually rose from 108, so 12 spaces, and that is Galaxy Trucker. Uh, Did I play that? You have not played <coughs> Galaxy Trucker, right. you had a headache last time. Uh, well then there you go, I, I had a headache. Another real time game. Give me a headache. Actually one that I will play. You will play Galaxy Trucker? Yeah, because it's very real light time, real time. Just building your it's built, So this game, so. like, uh, I mean I haven't played it in quite a long time. But, like, looking back, like, I really want to, and I buy the expansions, but this game is such a blast. Yeah, I think like, that's awesome, too. Oh, yeah, they do have an app. So this isn't based off the app or anything. I no, haven't no, played no. it. Um, but, yeah, basically, you uh, are uh, in a real-time setting where you are just grabbing <clears throat> pause. You have a board that shows an outline of a ship, 
but you are reaching in a pile of pieces that you're trying to build up your ship with with shields and you also need energy to power the shields and then also energy to shoot but also cargo because like you are a, a trucker and you're going through yes. these uh just different spots like different cards that are like okay we'll get cargo or meet alien people and then they can help you and you're kind of racing as well so it's just like while you're building your ship you're gonna have these wonky like stupid looking ships and you're like well i hope this works and then uh over time you're gonna have like danger cards and, and right. that like asteroids can come in hand it's like okay it's a small asteroid so if you have a shield on the left side that's where it's coming from you block it but then like bigger ones you need multiple shields and then if you don't have that you're just like yeah, you can well, never that make section's ship. gone you never make perfect ship. i can see why people would hate this because they don't yeah. like the yeah. fact you, that you you build it you spend all this time to build it just to watch it get destroyed you have to go into this game especially if you're teaching it with people let them know there's levity yeah, this is just fun. Let's yeah. just go out and you just see what the hell happens yep. and have a laugh. Because this, this is a good one when you if you're you've had a couple of beer, you know you're like yeah beer and pretzels game. beer and pretzels because mm -hmm. it's just you just laugh your ass off yeah. when, when you're just riding this tiny little piece of a ship. To yeah, oh yeah. Cargo's <laughs> not here, but uh, I am. I made it. Well, you're fired. That's fair. Uh, I'm alive. So. It is it is a blast, and yeah. and the expansions just make it even better. Like just adds more and more to it. Um, and then more, you can just, oh, well, okay, we've done the beginner ship, now let's build, like, some of them, I think one of them's like a circle or something, or... In one of the expansions. Yeah, one of the expansions. Least, yeah. But it's, it's fun. <laughs> we, need to, we need to play, because I think you'll like it. It is, it is a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I actually don't mind, don't mind it. Right. Well, I'll, I'll say my gripe before I let the stupid cat out. Um, even though I haven't played it, I will say, and maybe it's because I'm a girl, I think the name sounds so fucking stupid. <laughs> it is. Galaxy Trucker, um, which is, I have not been excited to play it. Every time you mention it, I'm like, I hope we don't. But now that you've well, described we'll, we'll it, call, it, it we, does. We, we, let's, let's call it. Let, we'll, we'll come up with a name. Um, fuck me up, fan. Fuck me up, yeah. fan. There we go. <laughs> All right, 96. All right, <laughs> my number 96 is a, it was 113 last year. Um, I battled with this one a little bit. Um, I haven't played the physical copy for a while. Mm -hmm. I've played it mostly on my iPad. Um, so that's why I'm like, you get oh. the whole technology thing versus physical. Um, but it's I, I, I mean, that's <clears throat> the same people who argue that apps shouldn't be in board games. Right. I mean, personally, <clears throat> it's a video game right. at that point. But, I mean, that's that's personal. This outlook. is a... It, you can play. It's Put it this way: Would you play four. the board game still? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's two to four players. It's just like it's easy to pick up a game on a deal. It's um, Ascension, deck building. Oh. <laughs> okay. So anyway, on Ascension, uh, it's a it's a nice little deck building game. It's it's the one that uh, you're gonna have a thing laying out here in the middle of the table. It's a, it's a one. It's you're playing against the other people. You're trying to get the most points. You're buying either bad, like uh, you're killing creatures or buying stuff that goes into it. Could be like um, constructs, as they call them, like artifacts, or you're buying more creatures to go into your deck that you they play. It's typical deck building stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but you, as you as you kill stuff or play certain cards, you gain these. Um, well, what they're called, they're red crystals, which are victory points. And once those crystals all disappear, then that's what sets up the end against whoever has the most at that end. Wins. Oh, okay. Um, and there's been tons and tons and tons of expansions yeah, for this game. Yeah, I remember game. seeing this for a while. Then, um, is it I still will, being supported? Uh, yeah. Uh, Besides the app. The, the uh, Stone Blade... <coughs> owns it now or something. It's sold. I think Stone Blade Entertainment has it now. Maybe, or no, uh, um, uh, Ultra Pro owns it now. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it still goes, but I will tell, tell you it it's... It plays so good. It's probably one of the best implemented deck builders as an app. Mm. And I mean, you can just set it up, go. The game could be done in ten minutes, and it's so smooth and everything. You can buy all the expansions on, well, most of the expansions on there. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I play it that way most of the time. Is anymore. it how much is the the base app? Uh, three bucks maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe. Because I think the like through the ages app is like ten or something. Yeah. But even then, it saves you. Right. Ten bucks is normally sixty or something. Yeah, so like I said, I, I I wrestled with it a little bit. It moves up because it's just it's a good. I mean, that's the thing is like I mean you can make the argument like it went up because you're still playing it. Like it's not like 
a different iteration. Right, it's right. the same game. Right. Um, I, I mean, that's that's fine. I mean, it's your list anyway. Who cares? Oh, no, I know. <laughs> so, 95! My 95 is new to the list. You have not played it, and but it, it's not a new game. It is Power Grid. Oh, I've heard enough. She has oh, I was going to say. I've heard enough. <laughs> I, like, I like that game. Power Grid is uh, was actually bought uh, from for me from a friend. He uh -huh. at the gaming store nearby. Uh, he was like he, he I think he played it while uh, he was out um, out there, and he's like, oh, I think Seth would really like this game, so he bought me a copy, mm -hmm. and then we ended up playing it. And yeah, it is a very solid game. Like I think. Like I get why a lot of people add it to their list or or play it or rave about it because, like, I'm trying to think. Freedom and freeze, yes. that's it. Um, like the game is super simple. Well, it's mathy. If you it's very mathy. If, if you like math, you're gonna. It'll yeah, be but I don't think it's like, like I think the the dice tower guys like. They're like, oh my god, you bring out a calculator. I'm like, no, no, it's not no that bad. you're not fucking no. doing. That much math, but you are okay. You are adding it at like doing basic addition. You have to get out scrap paper. <laughs> yeah, a crafting rock. calculator. Uh, no, it's not like that. But yeah, you uh, you're basically spending a bunch of money that you're trying to get on resources to fuel different energy plants that you have, either whether it's oil, whether it's electricity, or whether it's uh, coal. I think was the other one. Well, um, there, yeah, there was. Uh, there were three different types of it resources. Was, it was. Um, um, the, what's the radiation one? What was it called? Um, oh, there was the radiation. You're right. Radi the, the, there are four. Yeah, there's the, the, <laughs> the nuclear waste. The nuclear waste. Yeah. There's the coal, um, oil, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. so, and then you are building in these uh, uranium. That uranium. That's yeah. It. So, which <laughs> you're building these, uh, uh, you know. Um, well, power plants yes. in certain spots, and then you have to spend a lot more money to trail them, uh, you know, and connect them up to be able to get more victory points and stuff like that. So it is such a very streamlined game. Um, I will say, though, they punish you for being in first, like, pretty heavily. I still ended up winning, but I was in first for the most part, and I was like, oh my dear God, like, this catch-up mechanic is... Oh, like I was working for it. I will say it sounds really dry. Oh yeah, boring, but it's not. I mean, like my you wife, would not, my, my no wife and daughters loved it. Really? Yeah. When I played with them, like if you can get over the art part of it, because the art's kind of weird. There's nothing there. It's literally but, like, my, my girls yeah. took up to it. I mean, I I got third place out of the four of us. Yeah. You know, like. I took one look at it, because this is my grab. I took one look at it, because I think I came home and I was working that night. Mm -hmm. So you guys were playing it. I came in and I looked at it and I was like, dude. God. Yeah, yeah. But math is not my strong suit. I don't enjoy it in real life. I don't enjoy it in things that are supposed to be fun. <laughs> and it has paper money. Oh, um, right. But but a friend of mine with my copy got on Game Crafter, mm -hmm. and he printed off like playing card oh, money with money on it, with the power grid stuff on it. So like I have like playing card nice. money, yeah. which is pretty neat. That would have been smart. So power <laughs> grid new to the list, yeah. like. Uh, still high up there because it, it probably won't be getting played a lot. Right. But I am very interested because the game comes with two maps. Like mm -hmm. one is... They have a ton of maps out. And they have a bunch of extra maps out. Mm -hmm. uh, we played on the... I think... We didn't play on the United States one. We, we played on no. the Europe one. But the different maps will make the game play completely different. Yeah. Because I was looking at it and I'm like, I think I'll start here. It ended up working out because you yeah. can only extend so far and if people are going before you, they can take up the cheaper spots and you're like... <laughs> it takes on the same approach as like Ticket to Ride does with their different maps. Yeah. Like, like, yep. the, you know, it's just maps just make different variations yep. of the stuff. So that's my number ninety-five. All right, my number ninety-five. I don't believe you've played. <coughs> you need to. It's not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, it was one eleven. Well, ninety-five, so it can't be that good. It was one eleven last year, so it what? jumped up seventeen go, spots. Uh, from Renegade Games, it's World's Fair eighteen ninety-three. No, I haven't. Um, it's a good one. Uh, it was one of the ones my wife wanted me to buy because she monitors that um, the Mensa list of the like the the smart oh. people vote on the board games that are oh. qualify for Mensa, uh, and this is one of them. Well, it's genius. my wife's. Yeah, <laughs> she's a nerd. But anyway, uh, but um, this is a game. It takes obviously eighteen ninety three, so it's like it's oldie style art. Mm -hmm. um, 
think about like what the World Fair would look like back then. And mm -hmm. Your board that sets out here is like an old Ferris wheel. Um, and uh, you are playing cards, trying to, j you're just getting points, you're hiring, you get uh, actual por portraits of old people from back then, like actual people that were alive yeah. back then that you're using, you're gaining points. It's a, it's kind of an engine building deal a little bit and you're just, it's, it, like I said, it's been a while since I played it. It's, but it's super solid. Everybody enjoyed it. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, component quality is really good. Mm -hmm. um, not as simple as Reef. It's, it's, it's higher up than like Reef and let's say oh, okay. stuff like that that we had talked about. Yeah. Um, it, it takes a little bit of explaining, but it's not a difficult game it's at all. Doable. Yeah. Um, but um, it's just one of those. It's, yeah. it's, it takes 30, 45 minutes to play. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just it just does a good job with what it with right. what it does, you know. I will say going back a little bit because you said it's simple, but I mean it's still not as like it's right. not like gateway simple. Right. Like I think that's how power grid is too. Oh, yeah. Like power grid, like if you're be like there's a lot of math, it's like yeah, there's a lot of math, but it's not a lot of hard math. Well, when you hear like the dice tower guys, like Z Garcia is like, oh, that game is just Ooh, gonna blow boy, my mind. I had to add twenty to thirty-eight. <laughs> oh man, how, how will I ever? And it's like I hear him talk about how heavy it is. I'm like. No, my no. girls were in middle school and yeah. up and did it really well with it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I mean, but to each his own. Anyway, yeah. so, 94, my number 94 yeah. is also a new game, and this is also a brand new game uh, this year uh, called Critical Mass. Oh. So, yeah, Critical Mass made my list. Uh, basically, it's mechs fighting each other. Uh, it's a two-player game where <clears throat> you... Now, they've only come out with two sets, and I don't really like how they came out with them, because they came out with, like, one mech versus another mech, and then they came out with another box, but you could mix and match them. I have both the sets. Uh, but you have your own mech that has its own special abilities, and these uh, cubes that represent, like, you know, their shields, or their, uh, their jump core, or their uh, motherboard, and stuff like that. And you have a hand of cards that are either a dodge or a, an attack card, and you are literally taking your hand of cards, and you placing it face down, both you and your opponent, and you flip it. <clears throat> and then it's like, okay, if it's an attack, if you both play an attack card, whoever has the higher initiative, theirs goes off. Okay, it does three damage. Your and each each person's one of their four components of the mech uh, has a shield on it. So it's like if I'm dealing right. three damage to you, I can take out three of your number ones, or I can take out one of your threes, or or vice yeah. versa. Um, and the game ends whenever someone's cubes are all completely completely gone. Uh, but and then and then if I hit you, you're stunned, so you can't attack. But then you have dodging cards, and then over time you can actually upgrade, and you have a side deck of oh. cards that you can uh, put through. So you're you're sl slightly um, like I wouldn't really say deck building your hand, slightly changing your hand and upgrading your mech. Uh, it is always a blast to play. Like. Each mech is completely different. My favorite mech is the one that has the force field. So he is annoying, and I haven't ever lost with him. I've, I've tried playing other ones, and I've lost with them. Uh, so I really like the force field. Well, because he has six thoughts for his force field, mm -hmm. and then he has a card that, like, if I ever, I th like, that I can just regain my force field back. Right. So it's just constantly getting pegged. But... And then there's other ones where it's like, do damage equal to how many slots in your force field you have. God. So he's he's an asshole. Yeah, because you were the Iron Curtain when I oh, played Oh, you did it. play this and game. I, and, I, and I was like the ninja one, the quick one. That's right. I I think, I did you win? You. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I was like, I wanted to play something else. I, I, I was like, well, I know how to play this guy. Mm -hmm. And you hadn't played at that point. So I was like, oh, I'll try someone new. Um, but each of them has their own niche to them. You're right. like, my guy seemed, the Iron Curtain, yeah, seemed to be more... Heavy hit, but he was very slow. So I, I dealt faster upgrades, you, wasn't it? Like I could upgrade. Yeah, you like faster, stat, so. like you did combos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was combos, and so. it was like it was like okay, you're gonna. It was I think it was really close. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, oh yeah, we, we were, yeah. It was, it was like either you win this one or if I hit right. you, I'll, I'll win. So. I kept using my blocking. Or my, yeah. My, so <laughs> there's a lot of mind games. It's it's at uh, 94 just because. I mean, one thing I don't like is like. You can constantly just keep avoiding yeah. and making everyone waste there, but I mean that's kind of just lame. So that's my ninety-four. The cats are wrestling. My uh, ninety-four is was actually ninety-four last year. Oh, is the exact same. Interesting. Uh, oh, what's your negative on oh, critical yeah. mass? Critical mass? Did you ever play it? I know. I know. So I'm gonna have to play the fifth. 
Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Alright. I, I don't have... You, I, you I never, never played Power Grid and you shit on that but one. But I've seen it IRL. <laughs> Uh, my 94, like I said, was 94 last year. It's a cooperative game that will always be in my collection because of how easy it is. It is Castle Panic. Ah. Uh, you, you play that. I've I mean, now played Castle Panic. Played Castle mm -hmm. Panic huh? That's a good, it's a fun one. We ought to try it. It's a tower, tower defense one, right? Yeah, yeah. The, like, you have a castle out here in the middle of the table. It's a circular board with cut up into six zones. Yeah. Um, and uh, you start off with you draw from a bag these triangular, weird triangle-shaped creatures and they have hit points on the outside and they move in and you're playing cards. Archers can hit anything out in the archer ring because they have it labeled archer ring, knights, soldiers, and stuff. And as you play, <coughs> they turn their triangle until and once you've done it to where they have zero hit points and they leave the board. That's right. Yeah. If they get all the way to your castle wall, when they hit the wall, they don't enter your castle, but that wall goes away and they take a point of damage. If they get into your castle and start moving around, then they take they start tearing down your tower. Uh, if they tear down your tower before you, the bag is empty and all the bad guys are dead, you lose. There's cards you have in your hand that you can rebuild up water mm -hmm. or walls. Um, there's giant boulders that you can draw out of the bag. And you roll a dice and whatever number that boulder just rolls, oh. and it'll kill everything in this path and take out a wall and oh, everything. Cool. So if you don't happen to not have a wall here and a wall here, mm -hmm. and it rolls, it can just keep rolling right through and right. take out everything. Interesting. So your objective is just to keep your tower up standing mm -hmm. and kill everything in the bag. And there's been a, there was an expansion that I have that's practically unbeatable, I think, called Wizard's Tower. <laughs> well, we have to play it, I know. and then we'll win. <laughs> I've only tried it once. It just seems so rough. It's yeah. so difficult, though. But um, super co-op game, very simple to play. Dead I, Panic was the one you didn't like, right? Dead Panic sucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the zombie one. I beat it more often than I probably would have liked on the, the core box. When uh -huh. you throw in the Wizard's Tower, it makes it really tough. They've they had a Dark Titan expansion now, okay. too. I don't have that one yet. But um, it's just a really cool co-op game and simple. Awesome. Awesome. 93 is uh, fell from 43. So it has fallen 50 spaces, and this is strictly due to lack of play. Uh, it's actually probably the only semi-cooperative game that I like called Cutthroat Caverns. So, Cutthroat Caverns, if you don't know, is a game where you basically have a deck deck of, of monsters that you're just trying to uh, fight, and everyone has their own character with their own hit points and then uh, some cards that they, that they want to play. Um, the point of this game is that these monsters have a specific target and uh, will continue the fight and, and deal damage over, over the course of the fight. Um, and everyone needs to work together to kill it, but the only person who deals the final blow actually gets the prestige points. And once whoever makes it to the final, like whoever makes it through the entire stack of uh, monsters and has the most prestige points wins the game. So there's cards that you can play that will like uh, trip someone so they actually don't do any points, or some monster will say whoever didn't hit them gets, you know, 30, 30 points of damage, but you can say poke it in the eye, which does zero damage, but you technically hit it, so you don't get hit. So you're just trying to work together because if you are want to help someone, or if you want help and people screw you over, then that's just hurting them because they, uh, <laughs> they, they need your help, and you're like, oh, fuck you, man. You tripped me in that last fight. I hate you now. So it's probably one of the few games where I will go in knowing that and I will still enjoy myself because I just I like the unique monsters. Most of the artwork is really, really good. Mm -hmm. It's not consistent. The, the, between all the expansions, they just have you know different shaped cards. It's just poor, poor production quality. But then they have events, and then they have, like, very unique ones. Some, it's not always monsters. Some's like a, a labyrinth, or one was like a riddle room, and you had to play a game of memory. Right. Uh, so stuff like that that I, I really like, but I hardly ever get to play just because it's, it's a group thing. Like, I think I have the people now up here that we can play and have a good time. Um, but there, there are definitely people I would never play this game with. The player elimination on it's what kills. I, mean, I, I love. The oh game, yeah, but I like about I've that. played a game where, um, you know, I, I took a little damage from a monster, mm -hmm. right, and then because I was the low deal, people just I mean people just start piling on me and killed me with yeah. the first monster. 
I'm like, they oh, had man. no reason to even kill yeah, me. Yeah, that's, no, that's it's none just at all. To get you out. And they that's killed just... me, and I'm just like, okay, not because it's not a short game. No, no it's, it's you, not. Because you have to play. I don't know how many bad. I think it's depends on the number of players. Yeah, but I'm sitting. Yeah, I'm sitting. I'm like, oh, so fuck me, I'm out. Right, you guys, you know, we're on the first monster, and I'm just like, you know, it's like. Yeah, that, guys. no, that's a good I point. Left because I wasn't gonna sit there for an hour. Yeah, no, hours, I actually so. did forget about that. Yeah, the, the that player like elimination every, does suck. Yeah. Um, it almost sucks in every game. Uh, yeah, but this one's like it's you're supposed it's to so have long. all the people, and yeah. then you're supposed to do it the right time. Well, pile on somebody the very first yeah. monster. It's like that happened to no that happened sense. to Robert too, and he was like, okay, cool, I'm going home. Yeah, and then like, the, we're all like, what? And he's like, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, you're right. There was no reason. Yeah. You the point of the game is to be like we all need to work together, but I'm kind of gonna fuck you over a little bit right throughout. But, what's your negative on this one? Well, I think semi-co-op is a waste of fucking time. <laughs> Alright. I either love co-op or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a, a quote. You need to put that across the screen. <laughs> yeah. Semi-co-op is a waste of fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not wrong. Uh, I think this game is the one exception, because I don't think I have any other semi-co-ops. You have to come into this game expecting it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. you got to have a good tune about it. Yeah. Um... All right, my number ninety-three. Yep, is this must be my my family weight section. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my number ninety-three was number ninety-one last year, so pretty much the same. Uh, and just because I haven't played it a ton, is New York nineteen oh one. Yeah, you've talked about those uh, from Blue Orange Games. It's uh, Blue Orange Games has really taken you know with photosynthesis and and. Uh, and uh, New York 1901, and there's a lot of games they've come out lately. Really about to come out with. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's the orbit one or whatever. Or the, it's like a, <coughs> uh, the, the, it's a circle, like a, a sphere mm -hmm. board, and you're building a sphere thing, like a 3D puzzle. Kind of yeah. Thing. Um, but anyway, she, uh, or not she, <laughs> um, <laughs> what, what you're doing is obviously 1901 New York, this is before skyscrapers and stuff, and what you're doing is you're building the skyscrapers of New York. So it's like a, it's an overhead view of the board of, say, Broadway. It's got some of the main actual streets in New York and stuff, and you are um, building, they have buildings, and, and some guy is created with 3D modeling, uh, 3D printing, the actual 3D models of the That'd buildings. Cool. But you're going through and you're taking them, and right now they're just tiles, L-shaped tiles for mm -hmm. this one or whatever, and you're finding a block uh, in there, and you're laying those things down to get points. I uh, think tiles kind of like... Um, Baron Park. Remember those tiles when we yeah, played yeah. the, oh, the yeah. little shapes and yeah. stuff? Um, but you're, there's buildings shaped like that, and you're laying them on the blocks, and you're building. I forgot Baron. And, and, build, like and building up, and building <laughs> up, and building up point or points on a deal. But what's cool is you're getting points from that, but then there's hidden in-game scoring or end-game scoring, mm -hmm. where you uh, it says uh, you flip one over and it's like, okay, uh, whoever has the most buildings uh, on. Broadway Street, facing Broadway Street, gets bonus points. Oh, okay. Or whoever has most <coughs> on this street gets that. You so you don't know what the extra scoring is going to be on it. Um, it's another one of those. It's it's very simple, but it's strategic and knowing where to put stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, you you run out of like the little buildings because you have to build up. Like you can't yeah. just be like, I'm going to take that land. I'm going to throw a huge ass skyscraper there. You got to start with a little building. Gotcha. And then you got to upgrade to you the think next it's size. On the same to way build up. as Baron Park, I think it's the like same same level because it sounds like Baron Park, like kind of like that. I would I would I, must, I would almost put this. Uh, what What do you think about photosynthesis in Baron Park? Uh, man, I think they're. I would say I, I think, think they're both is, mid. I think they're both gateway. See, I think like, Baron I know Park you think photosynthesis. Has, I would say yeah. Well. Because, I mean, because there's an underlying meaning with photosynthesis where you have to know where the sun's going. Yeah, there's the same thing with Baron yeah. Park, though, where you have to have that spatial recognition. Yeah. Right, so you, can, it's, you can screw yourself, but even then, I know you say photosynthesis, photosynthesis is a little brain-burning. I didn't find it, I mean... It's not but, that it's brain-burning, it's just you have to, it's like chess, you have to think three moves ahead. Yeah. You know, like, if I place a tree here and grow it, the sun's going to take three times. I'm not going to get any points for these two turns until yeah. it gets back over here. You have to think ahead. And that's why I'm thinking there's that next level yeah. if you're trying to teach it with younger people mm -hmm. or new gamers. Like, my parents would struggle with photosynthesis okay. because until they played it for a while. Because you know? it's not a typical thing. Um, that's the only reason I say that. Just, okay. But anyway, uh, 
but night I would put it probably in the same deal. Yeah. Blue Orange seems to do a lot of those games are almost right on that same mm -hmm. wavelength. Like not uh, gateway, not gateway but like right there. Aaron Park's not Blue Orange, I understand, but, but right. it's still in that same same deal. But it's it's definitely one to try if you're it's I would say it's the next step up from like a ticket to ride. Okay. Because if you if you have somebody that likes ticket to ride and you're looking for a next step, go go with photosynthesis or like a New York nineteen oh one, Baron Park, something like that, just to throw a little bit of that tile in yeah, into yeah. it and stuff. But yeah, it's a good one for sure. All right. 92. My 92 is brand new to the list, and it is a brand new game. Uh, it is called Guardians. God, it's another one. And I ran out of uh, <laughs> index cards. Um, and so I was like, I marked out Time Stories. By the way, Time Stories isn't on the list. Where did it's, our index cards go? Uh, I was at work whenever I was doing this, oh, so I, I was, was like, like, I was like, what? I was like, oh shit, Guardians, I forgot about that one, and then I was like, fuck you, Time Stories, you're garbage. <laughs> I have an unlimited supply of index cards. <laughs> Do you, oh yeah, you, you would. Uh, anyway, so Guardians is a fantastic uh, two-player game, a two or four, but two-player, where it's Overwatch the board game. You play, uh, you control three heroes trying to vie for area control, it's all card-based, so there's four places out, uh, and, and I, one thing, uh, these places also have like special abilities. It's like if you move here, your player has to get exhausted. But right, right. so if you if you take control, if it finally moves over to your section, then you score it. And the higher ones, like it goes up to like one to three points. Uh -huh. The lower ones have better points. It's like oh, if you attack here, draw a card, stuff like that. But the higher ones are negative. Like they impact you negatively, but they're worth the most points. Right, right. But this one has eight eight heroes. Um, I think on it that play radically different. Kind of think Battlecon, um, which is kind of it's not the same thing, but each person plays different. They have their own different cards that make your team feel unique. And we uh, for the channel we just shuffled up the heroes and right. there you go. That's what you got. My team was very uh, like offensive and aggressive. His team was supportive and de uh, de defensive. So it ended up being a really good matchup. Uh, but then you, the, the thing that I really like about this is the ultimate cards, where they level up through cards that you play, and then you pop them off at the right moment to do some badass... It's just so high energy, so everyone right. in your face, oh, you died, great, this moves two spaces towards me, you still don't have it, okay, well, then they're going to come right back, and you're just, everyone's doing awesome moves. Uh, no one's... I never felt like... It's like, whenever he did some awesome move that just wiped my team, I wasn't like, oh. I was just like, okay, bam, bam, bam. Because when they come back in, you get to choose where they go. Right. It's like, fine, okay, well, you guys are all over there. I'm going to go to this one. Uh, it's such a blast. And, like, they uh, just released a, uh, well, they're going to release a, a hero pack. And it says hero pack one. So I think, same company that did Summoner, Summoner Wars, Summoner yes. Wars, right, which I hate. But uh, they supported that, like, really well. So I'm hoping they support this just as well. well. It just depend on how much... It was out. Of, it was out of pr uh, out of print. It was uh, out of stock at Gen Con. Yeah, I couldn't get a copy. The difference will be, is because back when Summoner Wars was running, it was Plaid Hat was their own entity. Now uh, another day owns, owns, owns it, so it, it'll be it depend. You know. That's true. Okay. <laughs> All right. Two. My number ninety. Oh, oh, do you have something before. negative about yes. this game you've never played? So or it's seen? not about this game, and I have seen it. <laughs> um, no, it's not about this game specifically. Specifically, um, it's about games that have that same mechanic where it's like, oh, you get an ultimate. Um, I just cannot make myself care about games like that. And I'll say this, and this is how you know it's valid. I it took me like two playthroughs of The Witcher to actually care about like signs and like actually doing stuff in combat. And it's a lot like that for board <coughs> games, where I just don't care. I just, I'm just like, I'm just here for a good time. Like, <laughs> you wanted me to complain, so I have Yeah, I wanted you to actually have valid complaints, I though. Because not everybody's like that. So How's the Witcher tied to Guardians? Well, because you know how the signs level. Yeah, they're not ultimate. Or, like, so. powers. And it's not an ultimate ability. Yeah, they're just magic. <laughs> yeah, it's not the same. It's not an ultimate ability. So, my number 92 <laughs> <laughs> is, uh... Take it a hammer. <laughs> It was 84 last year. The only reason it's slipped is because I haven't played it. <laughs> yeah, it's because it sucks. Year. Oh, you know, you haven't played it, and I think I you have. would enjoy it. No. It's one of the small box AEG games uh, called Valley of the called Kings. Called Oregon Trail. Nope. Valley of the <laughs> Kings. Um, it's an Egyptian-themed game. Uh, 
and it's got the small little cards, like the little ticket to ride cards mm -hmm. again. Um, and pretty much what you're doing is you are, um, you build up a pyramid of cards again, you know, and all that good stuff. Kind of like, think, duels. Oh, uh, someone are dueling away. But what you're doing is you are, uh, unearth you're, you're taking, you're unearthing stuff. It's kind of like you're an, arch you're an archaeologist and you're gathering things for your, um, tableau. You're building a little tableau set, set collection kind of things. And as you buy stuff or get stuff, um, you get an ability or whatever off of it. And there, there's another one of those games, think like Elysium, where you have, there's that fine line of knowing when to give up that special ability to, to bury it. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Um, cool. So take back what I said, because I just got it confused with another game. You're not an archaeologist. You are actually an Egyptian person. So take oh, okay. that back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, mixing it up with, Racist, with Tomb Raider. Man. Sorry. No, no, you are an Egyptian person. You have this stuff. You're you're getting this stuff, and you're being buried with it. Oh, so like I see. you're burying it to get when you get rid of the ability. <coughs> it's you're you're burying it. I gotcha. Right. Um, so uh, you get these really cool abilities from these really expensive cards or really cool cards, but then. If when the game's over, mm -hmm. if you don't have it buried, you only score what it's buried. Oh, okay. So it is like Elysium. Yeah, yeah. That's what I say. It's, okay. it's got the exact same thing. Like if Elysium ends and you have all this crap that you haven't finalized yeah, it's or whatever. Your Elysium. Then, right. Then you're kind of screwed. Okay. Um, but it's one. It's like it's it's a simple box. It's like the the love letter box, you know, and stuff. It's those. That oh yeah. Had those all those little mm -hmm. box games. Um, this one has another one called Afterlife, an expansion called Afterlife. That you can mix them all together, play it, whatever. Sweet. Um, I've heard of it. It's a really cool game, though. Like, it came out of nowhere for me, and it's, I don't know if it's super, super popular, but, yeah. you know, it's its a really good game, though, and good, neat little art on the little cards and stuff like that, too. Um, like I said, just fell just because I haven't played it all lot. Gotcha. All right, last one for this segment is a fantastic storytelling game, uh, well, depending on who you play it with, called Gloom! Gloom actually rose two spaces. It was 90, 94. Um, no, sorry, three spaces, if I could do math. Uh, yeah, it rose from 94, and now it's at 91. Uh, Gloom is such a fantastic game. You have a family of the, of, you just have a family in which it's all card-based, and you are playing these negative things on them, trying to get them, their points negative uh, to eventually kill them off. Um, but the, the thing about this game is you have to tell a story while doing it. Or you don't have to. Like, you can just play cards. The game would suck if you did. Yeah, the game sucks though. if you don't. But, but <laughs> if, if you integrate all these stories, because, like, you don't only have negative cards. There are positive cards that you can play on other people. So it's like, if I'm saying that Timmy uh, went down to the lake and he got stabbed in the neck, uh, and I'm like, ah, so he has a neck wound, and then he's negative 30 points. Um, and, uh, then Brad could have a card that he's like, yeah, as he was bleeding out, uh, this girl, little girl came, came up to him and, and nursed him back to health, and then now they fell in love, and then you can play a card on him that says, found true love, and it's yes. plus 50, so now I don't want to kill him, because he's, he's positive 20 points, and whoever's the most negative, so that's the kind of stuff that you do yeah. throughout this game, is you're just interweaving all this, trying to make your family's miserable Trying to make him possible. take him miserable, and then kill him, and then there's a bunch of expansions, I, I got the, uh, Oh, it's down I there. Saw, I, I got, saw the I got the wooden box, yeah. which is really nice. But then they have un unwanted guests, and they have uh, houses that every family has, and then just more and more. You just haven't gotten the weird expansions, have you? Like the Cthulhu and the no, space no, ones. no. I haven't done any of those. I, mean, uh, I just have the gloom kind of yeah. regular one. Um, but this one is like, and the reason why it's ninety one and not higher is because of that. You have to have the right group. Yeah. Uh, and and I don't play it all the time because of that, but. Whenever I do, like, just thinking of last time we played it, it was just hilarious. Like, the freaking, you had, a, what was it, a brain in a yeah, box or brain something, brain and you box, wheeled yes. down the ramp at the fucking mall. <laughs> <laughs> like, why? <laughs> so, it's just so much you fun. Should, you should play this game solo. That would be sad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you put like a sticker that says negative 91 for the person. Like, oh, I'm so yeah. The only thing that I'm, I would I'm going say to kill myself. <laughs> yeah, that's negative about that game goes along with what I said about Mysterium is if you're playing if you're playing with someone who's an honest to god good friend and you want to have fun with them but they're not creative, they're gonna 
struggle. Yeah. Not and you're going to watch time. them struggle, trying to, like, oh, well, um, my, uh, brain in a box. Pardon. Like, <laughs> like you're just going <laughs> to... He fell. He fell. Nine, minus ten points. It's yeah. Like, mm, okay. <laughs> that says he got stabbed, though. That's a stab <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so that's my number 91. All right, my number 91 is new to this list, um, and it's going to be a fast riser, um, especially after I get the upgraded board that they're producing to replace the original game board, and it's Bunny Kingdom. Oh, oh the bigger um, board? Yes. Uh, this game is awesome. Because it, I mean, you, it's bunnies. Bunnies everywhere, right? But the board was only about... 50% as big as it needed to be, so like, the late, when you got late in the game, there's so many rabbits, and you can't, it just, the yeah. board is all clustered. Oh, I heard. Well, they've come out, well, in the new editions that you buy the game now have the big board. Okay. Um, the, the, you only have to pay like a dollar for them to get, for oh, them to send you the new one, gotcha. and you have the other, but uh, it makes the board like 50% bigger, and that's going to be just wonderful. <laughs> okay. Um, but you're just laying stuff out, you're, it's area control, you, and it's, it's a, it's a war war game, area control game, mm -hmm. but just with bunnies in here, <laughs> and you draft cards, and you do all, it's just, your scores end up like in the 200s, like, it's a point scoring. Yeah, I think it seemed yeah. like it'd be right up my alley, it's but a, it's like, a the theme I couldn't game. get past. It's so funny. Aiello, right? Yeah. 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 I, I just, I wouldn't recommend doing it until you get a big board, like, like if I got my big board and mm -hmm. do it or whatever, that's fine, it's, it, it just gets really confusing when you're trying to do the scoring, when it's... So compact. so compact, but um, just the little cute little bunnies, you know, and all the colors, and you just see the board. Like if you pull out a picture of Bunny K, it's just bunnies everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but uh, and there's little castle things that you can set them in when they you can you have a feudum or a feud. Um, what was it called? Bunny, Bunny, Bunny Kingdom. Kingdom. It was called Bunny. I didn't really look up but um, weird. it's gonna be one that moves up just because, you know, it it doesn't sound it's it's playing a war game minus the the uh, heavy theme. I can see how that would get clustered you know? real quick. Yeah. Um, it does look cute. So it does look adorable. You can go and play a game and be like, hey, I have this cool Bunny Kingdom game where you go in and you're trying to get, <laughs> you know, instead of just being like, this is Germany. Right. <laughs> I got Nazis and we're killing Jews. <laughs> right. It's like, so, man, dude, what's wrong with you? Why is it every game like this with you? <laughs> so it, it has every a, it has a bigger, it has a more more appeal yeah. to get people to it. But you're actually playing a war game, really. I mean, area control all the way and and stuff, but just lighter kind of thing. Yeah. In a way. And I appreciate that because I don't like area. I don't, not that I don't like area control. I just don't like it when the theme is so heavy that it's like, oh no. <laughs> All right, so that is our first segment, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Stick around for the rest of our top 100. It's only going to get better and better from here on my list, anyway. And more, um, negative. And well, more negative from Cat, well, apparently. Now, now that we're, you know, those last 10. Those right? last this 10, like, I was just making shit up. Crap. <laughs> the rest Are these even games? <laughs> <start. laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching this, and if you like this video, then click the subscribe button below to enjoy any video that I put out. And right next to that subscribe button is a little bell, click that so you get notified of whenever I actually upload these videos. If you want to support the channel, you can definitely visit my Patreon page, the link is in the description below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.